Michelle from Argentina wants to know, what would we do if we ran into a clone of ourselves to prove it was us, what would we do? I don't know. <laughs> I might embrace the double. That's how we'll know it's the real you, if you're hugging you. Oh no, not an actual, I mean, I mean, I would just like that there was another person out there oh. that was like me, or would, and use them to do things. <laughs> yeah, so you actually wouldn't prove. I wouldn't prove that. Who was the real one? I he would, would just say, with come it. with me and come don't tell me. who Let's... saw you. Yes, Recently, thought that I might be a good short order chef, like I a cook. I think oh, I'd yeah. be really good at that. But other than that, I wouldn't. I would be happy. <laughs> no? I can imagine you being like a writer or something. Yeah. A photographer. I, would, I think a writer, like a writer, photographer. Emily Gerard, thanks for coming out. Hello. Nice to meet you. I think I'd be doing something in art. You know, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of where I left off anyway, and now I get to do that every day, so I feel really lucky. But if I, I mean, if I wasn't in a band, I would be making some kind of art. I think. I think if I wasn't in a band, I'd be writing either, I always wanted to write comic books when I was younger, or like uh, some kind of horror novel. Maybe, I don't know, maybe somehow into video, like making video games or, yeah, maybe film. I don't know, actually. kind of where you left off. Yeah, that's kind of where. where maybe film, yeah. I was all right at that. That was kind of fun. Yeah, I know. I fled at you at Comic Con. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God, you had the nosebleed. Yeah, spontaneous, <laughs> spontaneous yeah. nosebleed all over the place. It was that really crazy. Did I tell you guys that story? <laughs> no. So we, uh, no, I didn't, I didn't. Can we, can we tell? Please. Okay, so we're I'm doing a, a me, it was me and Gab, <laughs> right? We're doing an umbrella no. signing. Um, you're just nervous. I, I no, I had I had gone. I had like a bit of a nervous breakdown yeah. last summer, and, and you guys all, your music and your issues really helped me get help. And I got up to you, and I just burst into tears, and then my nose started bleeding rather oh, wow. copiously. Oh, actually. I heard the story. Yeah. 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 I'm okay now. I felt, <laughs> right. it felt so bad. Yeah, she was like, "Oh my god," and then it was just. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, at least you remember me. Oh, yeah, totally. I remember, I remember. <laughs> got a bulletproof heart. You got a hollow point smile. I started playing guitar, I think, probably like 13 or 14. My older brother, uh, Louie, we all shared a, a, a bedroom together, me and my two older brothers. And, you know, he would play guitar all hours of the night. And I always thought it was like, oh, wow, it's like, you know, the coolest thing. And, you know, so he passed down records that he was into um, to me. and. I started taking it up and he let me use all his gear and that's when I first started playing. Uh, uh, say, it, back home. I don't have any I'm know. Know. I'm like, I'm the beginning. Since the first album. Yeah. Like seven years. Like three seven. years for me because I'm like only 15. Yeah. <laughs> I'm 22. Uh, I'm like in love with that. I think I started playing, I think you had a you had an old acoustic that I would noodle around on, but it wasn't. I didn't. I didn't seriously try to play guitar until you got that uh, that Stratocaster. Right. I always wanted to be in bands. My dad played drums. My my grandfather played drums. They still do. So music was always like that was the thing that was. You know, they were like, oh, you know, go to school, but you have to start a band or you have to play something. And uh, they wanted me to play drums. I, my dad tried to teach me when I was like three, but I think I was too small. Uh, after that, I really wanted a guitar because I felt like I wanted to write a song. And uh, my dad got me a guitar. And uh, I looked in like tab books. I learned how to play an E and an A. And I was like, F I'm writing a song. <laughs> <laughs> we started going at 8 o'clock the other night and have a couple of 
Yeah, I got an acoustic guitar for my 10th birthday, and um, I remember not really liking it very much at first, and then about, you know, a few years later, I picked it up again, and then I really wanted an electric, so then I got an electric when I was about 15, and then I started writing songs immediately. so young and I would take out these ads in like the East Coast Rocker to try to find people to play with and all these guys were like in their 30s and it was really weird to have a 30 year old come to my parents house to jam with me and I was 15 and they would see how young I was because I really wouldn't tell them I would lie about my age and then so ultimately it never worked out because I didn't want to play with like a 15 year old. Did your parents say anything? They weren't psyched on the process. They, they weren't psyched about it. They'd be like how old is this person? Like what are you doing? Like they had no idea. And then I'd just be making noise and they'd just get frustrated and, you know. Um, yeah, they definitely didn't like the fact that I was like basically inviting strangers over to come play with me. <laughs> Bring booze. <laughs> Bring booze. <laughs> that definitely got me through this really rough summer. I think it was like my first breakup and I remember going to this park really late at night where they had a baseball field and I remember um, like passing out in the dugout. Hey guys, we're My Chemical Romance and you're watching Boombox All Access on Boomerang. My new record is called Danger Days, uh, which was the fabulous kill choice. It's, uh, it's our fourth record, fourth studio record. It's very rewarding hearing it back. It's definitely one of my favorites. Aaron's a talented artist. Like, he's sick music, very inspirational. The music fits like everybody. Like, anybody can listen to it, anybody can get a with it. Like, it, nobody dislikes my performance, never met somebody didn't like it. To the places that you never need to. The recording space um, was probably about the size of this area that we're in now, really small. So we're all like really tight, confined, and um, it was cool. We were all trying different instruments. Definitely a lot of experimentation, I think, and that was that's that's one thing that we we like to try to do on every record is really reinvent ourselves and try new things. Kill guys! Listen to me. If you see another kill jar and fall down, you need to pick them the f up right away. You guys are doing a great job, but keep doing it. Anybody falls down, I don't give a shit how much fun you're having. Stop what you're doing, stop shaking your ass, and pick that motherfucker up, all right? Now y'all ready to dance? Uh, I wasn't convinced. Are you ready to dance? This song's called Planetary! There might be something outside the window But you just never know it could be something right past um, I guess, for me, like, um, something that, that makes a great artist to me is, is truth, you know? Uh, just being honest with yourself and, and, and the people that are perceiving your art, kind of putting yourself out there. I like people that are, I don't know, show that, that frailty of, of being human. You know, I think that's kind of beautiful. Yeah, like this kind of like vulnerability matched up with fearlessness is actually a really amazing thing. And only real artists possess that, like to be able to be vulnerable and fearless at the same time. It's a crazy thing because, you know, that's like, it's a, in a weird way, it's like being, being ready to die or something. Um, and to be able to show that is what a great artist does. That's totally true because like, I mean, you know, even as musicians, like, 
you really have to put yourself out there to be good. You know, it's like you kind of bare your soul to everybody when you're writing a song or when you're playing it for somebody. Like that's that's like the true you or something that they're seeing. The kids from yesterday is kind of an overall favorite. I mean, there's there's so much that we love on that album, and it's you know on a bunch of different levels. Every song you write has like a special place in your heart, but uh, I don't know. Certain songs are you love for for certain reasons. Like kids from yesterday, just I don't know. The, when it was written, the time when it was written, how, just how it sounds and stuff is just so different than I ever thought we would ever turn into, you know, and I think that's why I love that song so much. Uh, songs like Vampire Money is a song that, like, another band would write, and I'd be like, damn, I should have wrote that song, but I finally feel that way about you know, one of our songs. The thing was great, especially the, 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 uh, the remake they did for the second part of band. That was an awesome song. Hello, hello, hello again! Again, we're having a great time tonight. We don't talk much. Everything we have to say to you is writing the songs. You know the words, you sing it right back. You show us that love, so thank you. But I really want to thank everybody and all the MC Army and everybody that's involved in singing for Japan. Thank you so much, it's been amazing. I see the shirts, I see the flags every single night. I see them tonight. Thank you so much for all your hard work, and thank you. Got to see what tomorrow brings. Sing it. You know, we were in the UK when, um, you know, we were watching the news and we saw the, about the earthquake and then the ensuing tsunami. And, you know, we were really moved by it because, um, you know, Japan kind of has a special place in our heart. Our fans had started this thing, a hashtag called uh, on Twitter, uh, Sing It for Japan. And what they were doing was they were using the song kind of to give inspiration for people over there. It was just like a really cool coming together of our fan base. Sing it for the world, sing it for the world. And we put out the word to our fans to kind of submit videos and artwork and we just got like, we just got so much stuff, just tons of stuff. And I shot some stuff on my iPhone, like the, the, the stuff with Gerard and, and the drums, I shot that on my iPhone. Everybody was just so willing to give their time and energy, like this, all the string players played for free, we got the studio for free, the engineer for free, um, you know, everybody was just so, just wanted to be part of it and, and to help out. It's like a really cool thing that we're, you know, we're part of and a lot of people helped out and, you know, just really grateful that we could do it. What's the first music video that you are obsessed about? Thriller. Thriller. From Michael Absolutely. Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. Obsessed with that. Scared shit. Don't go away. We'll be right back with Boombox All Access. Hey, we're back with Boombox All Access started about 10 years ago. I met Mikey at a party, and then I met you at another party. It was usually parties. Yeah, it was all these that. really, there was this cool vibe happening at the time. It was this kind of like these house parties, and it was all like uh, musicians or people f starting record labels, or it was just people involved basically in the local music scene. And we had this little pocket there in, in, in North Jersey, and, and that's kind of how we all met each other. Let's go. Right. You too. Thanks for coming out early. I think, uh, you know, if you have the passion and you want to create music, go out, 
get a guitar, get a bass, get a piano or keyboard or something, and and just play it all day, all night long. Just keep at it. When you do something because you love it, like you find you're just good at it. You know, it's like there's something deep inside your soul almost that says, "I have to do this." You will, you know, you'll have something valid to say, and, and something will come will come out of that if you're doing it for the right reasons. So. Which one is your favorite band member? We have to choose? Yeah, uh, They're all to. great. <laughs> I'd have to say Frank. I gotta love Ray though, he's awesome. Just love Ray. <laughs> I know like a whole bunch of crap about Gerard. Oh, really? Good. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah. I have, uh, that, and that's the sound. We've done like a lot in a row. Yeah. So like we did four in a row and then only one day off and then two in a row again. So it's, yeah, I get nervous. Really? Um, just because I need like two in a row and then a day off to recover and then I'm not great for us to tour, but it's like four in a row like that. I understand my blow out. Yeah. What's your favorite thing about being on tour? Just playing shows. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's why you get in the bus. That's why you get in the van. It's always about the show. Like the cities are cool, and that's a plus. Getting a vibe of a city, getting to see the world, that stuff's really cool. But it's not as good as the show. And it stops mattering what city you're in anymore. It just a matters. All that matters is that room and those people in that room in that moment. That's it. Right before the set, we uh, kind of all get into like a group hug and uh, say a couple of words, you know, stuff either about stuff that went on that day or just, you know, remind each other to have a good time. We try to get like at least an hour uh, of just free time where it's just us, kind of get ready and uh, exhale a little bit, you know, do a little bit of stretching. And then we just, we just do it. Go yeah, and do there it. we go. <laughs> we do it. What if you had to do something different other than music, but you all four had to do it together? Oh man, Ooh. short order cooks. That'd be amazing. Yeah, I'd be down for that. Yeah. I always wanted to shoot a video where we're all basically just working at McDonald's, and that's the video. I think it was going to be the video for Kelly, your friends, and it was going to take place in New Jersey. Pick each other up! And how did you pick McDonald's out of all the fast food? Oh, I don't know, that's just a puff of life. <laughs> it's whatever sh hole is in the the middle of nowhere where you try to escape from is, which is why you start a band. Any one of those will do. I make up one. My favorite song in high school was Today by the Smashing Pumpkins. That definitely got me through this really rough summer. I think it was like my first breakup and I just got it on cassette and I remember going to this park really late at night where they had a baseball field and I remember um, uh, listening to Siamese Dream on cassette and be, like passing out in the dugout and then waking up. We are young and we are pale. You fucked up here. Got it. Yeah, I think sure. sure. Hold on. Get him first. <laughs> right I like hugs. This sweater smells like horrible, so sorry oh, no, about that. He doesn't know what's going on. I was just trying to look at the venue. Yeah. Sure. Now I can say I've hugged everyone. My favorite song in high school, in addition to today, was 1979 because it kind of um, invoked like that carefree, like childhood, summertime feeling. I was I was like so into metal at that time. Like that's I go to tons of metal shows and me and my friends just hate, like after school just go hang out and listen to like Overkill records and. You know, just stuff like that. So I definitely, that was my metal years. <laughs> yeah. And then oh, we got one more song for you. And one more thing to say: there ain't nothing wrong with leaving home. There ain't nothing wrong with running away. So Lana, never, never stop running.
I remember the first CD I bought, but I think I bought a cassette before that. I think it was the cassette single for You Could Be Mine. I got um, Look What the Cat Dragged In by Poison. And that was the first thing. I was very young. My dad wasn't psyched at all, you know? <laughs> the first album I bought with my own money was Injustice for All by Metallica. That's so weird. I, th I yeah. think that's my, my same one. I saw the one video yeah. and I was just obsessed after that. I think that's the same one. For me. We could run away, run away from What's the first music video that you were obsessed about? Thriller. Thriller. From Michael Absolutely. Jackson. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely thriller. Obsessed with that. Scared shitless. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, those I eyes. The band so scared shitless. Oh, oh, the eyes at the end. Oh yeah. my god. At the end was really thinking scary. The whole Vincent Price bit. Yeah. Oh, Lord. What was he thinking? <laughs> he did that in one take. Really? Vincent Price, yeah. Oh man, it's so good. He went in there, read it, and was like, all right. And yeah, he just the leaves. <laughs> it's all about that laugh at the end. Oh yeah. Got it out of this place in the bullet and grace thing with two in the can. Man, we did that whole tour. Where did we hit? Uh, Sao Paulo is where it started. I think I had to leave. Where did we go? I can't remember. The tour itself was very memorable, but like it was literally like play a show, get on a plane. Yeah, play, so we, we didn't know where we were. You know. What about the Latin American fans? They were amazing. They were so dedicated. So passionate, and, you know. They. Uh, they, they waited for us to come for such a long time and they were so excited that we, we'd finally come. If you could learn anything in Spanish, what would you like to learn? Probably something helpful, like, um, where's, I don't know, the bathroom? Where's the bathroom? I don't think it's all those baños, right? Yeah, yeah you could, you got it. Good. Where's the exit? Let's yeah. See. Where's the exit? How do I get out of here? Oh, Salido, isn't it? Exit. Yeah, La Salida. Yeah. Uh, sl oh, caution, slippery floor. <laughs> That'd be helpful. <laughs> right. Good night, Atlanta! We are born!